But let's move the discussion a little bit as well and say, is there an opportunity to monitor diamonds other than Kimberly Brussels? Okay? I don't know. We've got Tracer here. If I haven't scared everybody, okay? Chalk, tell us, what can we do to monitor the flow of diamonds from the source so that we can get more information and, in my view, we can sell an added value product? Okay? But see, maybe, maybe some people have ideas. They're doing all this Everledger stuff. They're doing this, uh, all this new technology. I know De Beers is also we're very much interested in, in having a source of diamonds. I know Sarin is here. Sarin's got a way of tracing diamonds. Okay? Guys, all this is happening. So, I don't know. I'd love to hear from Tracer. Sure, to be the one that uh, maybe changes the topic a little bit. <laughs> I, I mean, like, I think before, before we talk, I don't want to get into the depths of... Speak into the mic really Sorry. strong so that... I don't want to get into the depths of, of the details around blockchain and Tracer, etc. I'm sure we can. But I think it is important that there's no intention to replace things with technology. I think building and layering and adding is a much easier approach. I am... Um, and maybe, look, depending on where we want to go with this, we can talk about the details. And I do think that technology is going to make a massive impact in the way in which we look at things, the way in which we trust things. How do we give the choice to consumers, the people that actually create the value in the industry? But I think, and, and we have this challenge, and I'd love to hear from Leanne as well, there are a lot of diamonds, an inordinate amount of diamonds that we need to be able to put on the technology. And it's going to take time to get us to the point where we have all of the diamonds on that technology. And I think the challenge we have is those diamonds that don't want to declare their source, but it's more the impact, because it's more than just source, it's impact along the value chain. They're going to be the last ones to come on the technology. So the gap between today and where we're going to get to, we do need something in the middle that's going to be able to cover us off where we are. So I think happy to talk as much as you like about the details and technology and the value, and I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in you know, taking the story from the beginning the whole way through to the consumer. But I don't think it is a silver bullet that's going to get us from zero to 100 in uh, six months or a year or two years. It's a, it's a complicated problem. And, you know, we were, as you know from Tracer, we're focusing on somewhat larger goods for grainers and above, and we're, we're working on something different for Melee. But as a, as a newcomer to this part of the industry, uh, rolling around in the size of the Melee challenge is unbelievable. The, the sheer volume of stones that we're dealing with is something that technology is not going to solve overnight. So, I, I mean, I'd love to hear everybody's view, but I, I think to try and switch off and switch on, it, where the industry was and where the industry needs to be is going to be quite, quite, quite painful. And I think we're going to need to layer on. Um, but I don't know if uh, people agree with that, that sort of view of the world. Leanne, what do you think? Is there a way to trace diamonds? So I, I, I'll have to say we work across many different supply chains, whether it be diamonds and gemstones, um, definitely in the textile space as well, and even more complicated critical minerals out to electric vehicle batteries and solar panel passports. And the diamond industry stands to be an exemplar for the world. You have hyper consolidation geographically. It has one of the most simplistic supply chains that you could ever traverse. Yet it has one of the most challenging human systems and it is often its own worst enemy in that change is seen to be um, inertia, which we cannot hurdle across. Um, and innovation stands to be a nice glossy word, but we're not prepared to systemize innovation at its very core. And we're still sitting and looking at ourselves around the systems of yesterday with the technology of tomorrow, but the enablement of that in the alignment of value and value creation is missing fundamentally. You have actually the right construct. 81 countries came together to provide for the KP. There is not another industry that I can sit and speak to and or be involved with that has that construct. You have the right human system, but it's charged with complexity of emotion and charged with complexity of legacy. And being a completely newcomer to this industry, um, feels like I've been yelling at the wind for some time, yet we see other industries completely accelerate over the top of exampling how you can bring transparency. The tooling is missing. This is not a technology problem. This is a systems level change problem and a true alignment of value and value creation. And we're often fighting each other for what good looks like. So I would say we need to define what is good. So, 
Tom, yeah, it's great. Tom, you're, you're working with gold, right? Right. And there are other commodities and other things out there that are also in the jewelry industry that, you know, we are doing something. So maybe you can enlighten us what you're doing you're with ARM, right? Right. Uh, I'm Toby Pomeroy, Mercury Free Mining, and we are a nonprofit located in the U.S. I also happen to be an ARM board member for 11 years or so, but uh, what our work really is about connecting the jewelry industry to the issue with mercury in the gold mining system, in the, go in the gold chain. And most people up until quite recently have been virtually completely unaware that there is mercury involved in our gold supply, that there is uh, about 20% of all the gold in the world mined every year comes from artisanal and small-scale gold miners who use mercury simply because they have no other means of capturing gold sufficient to live on. So we've got an issue of 20 million gold miners and 100 million people who depend on them who are shackled to mercury. And it's simply because they're, they're there are means that they could use, perhaps, if they had the support, if they had the education, but we're also in this process looking for new methods. We are uh, analyzing ores, innovating, uh, or connecting those with uh, innovative technologies, and committed that we can, as an industry, align our attention, our intention, and support these miners having a means of mining safely and profitably. It is ridiculous for me that they are, that we have, that we're not addressing that in a really substantive way. It's an issue, I don't know that there's a greater issue in our industry than 12,000 pounds of permanent neurotoxin mercury being released into the environment every day. It's an issue, and, and I, I know diamonds are really important, and it may be that mercury ultimately has a bigger human rights negative impact, reputationally and humanitarianally, if that's a word, at, at, on the ground, I think is an issue that we must address. And yes, there is growth. We are seeing it. And so how that's going to happen, I don't know the structure of it, Martin. I don't know how we would track it, but I know if we bring our will to it, we will do it. It just, that's how it goes. When we put our attention and our will to something, we, we have that happen. So we're honored, we, we are delighted by the traction that's happening, the number of organizations that are saying, yes, we wanna be a part of this. We are in, we are standing with 20 million gold miners. Our industry stands with the miners. So I don't know if I'm answering your question quite, but I appreciate the, the, the floor. But the question is, is there any way that someone buying mercury-free gold would know that this is mercury-free gold? Is there any way in which to ascertain or to ascertain the distribution system? Yes, there, there is. So what are you doing in that regard? And maybe diamonds can learn something from gold, or at least your story about how you're able to identify or the product that, and you know, make sure that we know what, where the stuff comes from, please. Right, there, there is not much mercury free gold that's really available in the world that is traceable. Alliance for Responsible Mining, Fair Mind Gold is uh, eco gold. There's been no mercury cyanide involved in that whole process. And they know that, so they, they can actually certify that as the case. We are working on a pilot program with ARM as well as with SCS in developing their uh, SCS 007 certified, uh, uh, certified, um, uh, anyway, climate, it's a climate neutral goal, basically, and, and developing supply chains for that. So it's in process, and we're excited that there are industry players that are stepping forward with that and saying, yes, we can, but it's really limited at this point. All right. Um, Ahmed, do you have any views about how Dubai, which is a central place of goods coming from Africa or elsewhere, and you know, you may say, listen, we just follow the law, not our problem, but is there anything that you can do or Dubai can do or UAE can do or relative to diamonds that are coming, say, from merengue or, or diamonds that are clearly problematic? Is there any way you can, you know, go beyond the Kimberley process in terms of 
um, not accepting imports of those diamonds. And also, what is the position of the UAE right now regarding diamonds that are coming from Russia? Are you okay with their importation? Or what's yeah, your deal absolutely. With? Me and Martin will take turns on this. Uh, first time I spoke to you about, Maran Gumayn, I think, uh, was what, 2011? You utilized the first uh, first talk in Al Tower. You were giving an update about the forest in Yosemite Sams when they burned them intentionally and new markets come up. In any case, uh, we've gone back and forth on this. We've, uh, we've dealt with the situation where we couldn't, it couldn't be processed. So I, I'm, I'm happy to share that. I mean, as of now, nothing to my knowledge of, uh, of shipments have been processed since, since, before, since the conflict. Yeah, um, it's been a lot of interesting discussions today. Sorry, Mark. Bring that yeah. Back. In a lot of interesting discussions today, I um, just want to go back to one point. If you are advocating to boycott the Kimberley process, please be aware that your actions would be illegal because any diamond coming without a Kimberley process is illegal in the US for last night. So until you've got an alternative, just let's make sure the unintended consequences of what we're saying we don't get carried away. Um, and the unintended consequences of what you're saying is people are going to say natural diamonds getting too hard, I'm going to get a lab grown diamonds. And then the livelihood of a million people in Africa who are digging the artisanal guys, etc. Um, they're going to be in danger, they're going to, they're, going, they're going to be out of work. So recognize the good things that diamonds do. It's not a perfect world and we all need to work together to try and make it better. Um, but we need to be together on this and otherwise it's a lot of individual commercial institutions making decisions about what is morality, what is legal, what is ethical, etc. And there's conflicts of interest when you have that. That's why you have trade associations to work together to try and make sure that we can put the commercial stuff to one side and actually work for the better interests of the whole industry. And I think that's really important. And it's not somebody in New York making all the decisions about what is ethical, what is moral. Yeah, we've got to work together as an industry. You've done a great piece of research in Zimbabwe. And I wish you had participated in the review mission to Zimbabwe to actually bring that to the attention of the review mission in Zimbabwe. Because at the moment it's you saying, I've got these photographs. Can I verify them? Can anybody verify them? Can we go back? You've not published the names of the people, for example. I understand about trying to protect people around that, but we need to work through the channels that we have. And I know you're raising some very good points. You've got a commercial pers perspective. I believe also the market should decide about what diamonds are, uh, with origin and all the, um, the traceability, etc. Maybe they will trade for a premium. Great. That means that more people will be incentivized to get their diamonds through the tracer systems, through the avalanche systems, through the origin. I mean, we've got a delegation from Botswana here. What are you saying about those diamonds? Those diamonds are great diamonds as well. So how do we not try, we're a small industry, how do we try to work together and collaborate together? Well, those I, are my points. That's a very nice idea, but the problem is that there are people, and you can say, well, we're relying on this trade mission. Uh, that's horrible. It's an That's horrible. Trade. This is the trade mission that's been set up with the Zimbabwean government who is going out there to see what's happening, controlling. Why don't you go over to China with this woman who's doing that now? Now, one other thing, it is not illegal to say we no longer support the Kimberley process, okay? Not illegal. Is America is a free country, yeah. okay? And I think that it's, I think that if you do support the Kimberley process, you literally are responsible for the certification of blood done. So that's, that's a different view than you've got. Us coming together is an interesting point. 